please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. For that, my guest this afternoon is Costa Bilapurkar of Morningstar Investment Advisors, who joins in to answer the queries that have been coming in. Costa, good afternoon. Nice, man. Seeing you after a while now, and uh, what a time that has been actually Absolutely. in the market. And there are a lot of people actually who are looking for portfolio advice. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get started right away. Our first query is coming in from Nara Thalasi Krishna, who writes to us from Andhra Pradesh. He's planning on investing in multiple schemes, so he wants a view on uh, whether or not the portfolio that he has sort of shortlisted works out. Uh, uh, he has, I think, uh, three schemes right now. One is uh, the Invesco India Contra Fund, uh, where he's investing about 17,000 rupees a month. Uh, the Canva Rebecco Emerging Equities Fund, where another 17,000 a month. As well as the Access Blue Chip Fund, um, where he also has about 17,000 rupees a month. He's also looking at wise on where he can uh, park 20 lakhs uh, which he wants to keep it as an emergency reserve. So do these funds sound okay to you? Is there anything more that he can add on? What does he do? Sure. So I, I think there are a couple of things that he needs to look at. Is one is, uh, you know, he's got a short list of about three funds. Yeah. I would advise to maybe look at just diversifying. And slightly more adding on maybe a couple of funds would, would be ideal. Uh, so talking about the specific funds that, you know, he's got. So obviously there's a contra fund, which is a more counter-cyclical sort of play. We like the option of having a contra or value strategy. The only thing I would advise is that if he's looking at that, probably should be about 20% of his portfolio, no more. Uh, because ideally you want to be largely into growth funds and, and contra or value strategies really look at, you know, kind of complementing yeah. your overall portfolio to reduce the diversification, uh, sort of increase the diversification and reduce the risk. So really that's what you should be doing. Uh, the other thing I just want to highlight on a specific strategy and just sound them off is uh, the Canada Rebecca Emerging Equities Fund. Uh, we've seen a recent exit of the fund manager who was driving that strategy, Ravi Gopalakrishnan. So clearly, uh, you know, uh, while obviously there's another uh, gentleman, Krishna Sangvi, who's taken over and he's mm. pretty good himself, but you know, uh, we also want to give some time for Krishna yeah. to settle in and we would see elements of his mm. Krishna style really coming in. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so to that matter, you know, I, I think he you know, it's great, it's been run really well, but you want to see how it kind of blossoms under the new manager. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's been a good strategy. But I would say, you know, come to my first point, he needs to add on some more elements of growth in his portfolio. And clearly some of the large cap or mid cap strategies is something that he can look at. Uh, the other question that he had was about parking about 20 lakhs as an emergency fund. Now, I'm not sure exactly what time frame or that's something that he needs. Like, I think you know, uh, he says long term in case, uh, should it be required, basically. Right. Sure. So, you know, if it's, if it's long term, -ish, I wouldn't mind him actually kind of doing, driving some asset allocation and parking away some part of that into equity as long, you know, he's got five to seven years at least. And, you know, maybe about 30, 35% into fixed income funds, mm. which will you know, irrespective of the markets are, he can kind of redeem mm -hmm. right away. Because the problem with an equity is that if he needs the money tomorrow and the markets have crashed, then he's, yeah. he's probably going to be coming out, uh, you know, worse off. Uh, the fixed income component will add that element of stability. Mm -hmm. But since he's saying he doesn't expect that right away, hopefully mm -hmm. long term, then, you know, you would want to still load up a fair bit of equity because mm -hmm. that can really give you sort of, uh, you know, growth in your portfolio. Yeah, and you can ease yourself out of it as and when required. Okay, the next query comes in from Rupa Sarma. She's uh, online with us from Gujarat. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon. How can we help you? Yeah, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Tell me. Yeah, uh, I have about 10 lakhs of uh, amount. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have about 10 lakhs. Yeah, good hmm. afternoon, ma'am. I have about 10 lakhs. Uh, yes, ma'am. Tell us, what do you want to do with that money? Yeah, 10 lakhs of investments and I want you to advise me hmm. and uh, assess my investments and advise me. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Kostam, I'm going to just read out uh, uh, the portfolio to, uh, to you and it's really quite exhaustive. So a couple of fronts from HDFC, Growth Opportunity, Hybrid from ICICI, they have, uh, she has a blue chip, Infra, uh, Multi-Asset Fund, uh, there is also a value fund over there. 
Reliance growth, Reliance uh, power infra, a tax saver from Reliance, uh, SBI blue chip. I mean, it is a very, very exhaustive fund. But to my mind, it seems that it could really, um, you know, tire down a portfolio. Can mm -hmm. we trim it up a little bit uh, to make it a little more, uh, 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 you know, sort of uh, versatile and agile in markets like these? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head. Uh, it is a pretty large portfolio, and sometimes over diversification actually kills yeah. uh, the benefits of a diversification. And clearly, I would advise uh, Ma'am to kind of reduce the number of funds, and uh, you know, it'll probably require some handholding from a financial advisor. But I can give some basic sort of key points that she needs to look at. So one is you want to reduce that to a more manageable set of funds, probably 10 to 12. Uh, and uh, you know you'll need to really do a holistic uh, look at your portfolio before you take a call as to you know which of the funds that should stay and which should go and probably some of the new ones to come in. But again, I think it needs to be sort of mated with uh, you know what your risk return profile is and accordingly look at you know which of the suitable funds to stay and the ones that can probably go. But definitely the first thing I would say is that you need to reduce the number of funds and over diversification, like I said, is is, is bad because what happens is a you you lose track of you know the funds that mm. you're kind of invested in b sometimes you know having similar strategies doesn't really play out so we spoke about in the earlier question where you need to have managers with different styles or different sort of plays that they're doing so that over a market cycle you're reasonably well protected and i think that's the element that needs to come out so one thing i would look at and you know i would urge my advisor to look at is what is the similarity of the portfolios and uh, you know the funds that she's holding uh, i don't see too much of fixed income in a portfolio that's another element i would want to add on to because clearly uh, and I, I think that would probably address the other query that she had where she wants a monthly income and she's got 10 lakhs to invest hmm. Uh, the most ideal funds that you would want to look at is ultra duration, ultra short duration or short duration funds. Uh, and we have some names that popped up on the screen where she can look to invest this money and get into the dividend option uh, and she can get monthly dividends. I wouldn't advise into getting into a balance or an equity fund for monthly dividends because that's not really yeah. uh, you know, the mandate of those funds to deliver regular dividends. All right, and that uh, doesn't work also now. Absolutely. Mrs. Sarma, uh, I hope that works for you. Thanks very much uh, for calling in. Let's take a very quick break. Lots more queries to answer. We'll be right back after this quick break. Hi, welcome back. You're watching MF Corner. Kostal Bilapurkar of Morningstar Investment is my guest this afternoon and he's answering all the queries that are coming in. Our next query comes in from Mrs. Nandalal Hemdev, who's on the line with us from Mumbai. Mrs. Hemdev, good afternoon, ma'am. How can we help you? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you very much for the taking okay, my Mr. question. Mr. Hemdev, my apologies, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I want to know about that... Uh, Portfolio, what I have sent to you. Right. Uh, for 20, 25 years, she wants to invest and uh, have a uh, hmm. corpus of one, like, one crore. Okay. So, uh, this is on behalf of your daughter that you've sent yeah. in. So, uh, Kostub, yeah. uh, this is the portfolio of a young person. Mm -hmm. Okay. ICICI Focus Blue Chip. Um, and these are all SIPs that have been ongoing, uh, I'm assuming, for the last two, three years. Aditya Birla Sun Life, uh, Frontline Equity, Kodak Select Focus, ICICI Large and mid cap. Uh, so the last two have just been started. Sure. Um, so a great time to actually have uh, started SIPs and uh, there are two more. Um, which is the best way now for her? Uh, I'm, and I'm assuming the overall goal is wealth creation, right. right? So what is the best way for her to actually mold her portfolio? Is this the best way? I, and I think over 20 years she wants to collect a crore. Is she on track? Okay. So um, you know, I'm looking at the funds that are listed here and the ones you mentioned out. Uh, so per se, you know, great funds. We don't have a problem with any of these. Uh, well managed, I would I would say stick on to these. Uh, but if you look at the funds that are currently selected, right? So the focus, I say, say focus blue chip, the Birla Frontline, both large cap investments. Uh, the Kotak, uh, which is now the standard multi-cap, which is a multi-cap fund, and the ICICI large and mid-cap, which is a mix of large and mid-cap stocks, but more biased towards large-cap stocks. Now, if I look at this, and you know, if I was told that this is for an investment period of 20-plus years and really wealth creation, I would say that you know the investor 
uh, is under allocated towards uh, the more growth part of the portfolio, which is more towards mid and small caps. Uh, I, I know it's you know that part of the market's been going through stress for this year, but clearly if you have a long investment horizon and the one that we keep sort of talking about, that 20 plus years, you definitely want to be adding on elements of small and mid cap funds. So there are some really well managed small and mid cap funds, uh, you know, from Templeton, HDFC, mm. uh, DSP. Uh, and some of the other asset managers that you should definitely, uh, you know, be looking at to adding in your daughter's portfolio. Uh, so that's that's really more on the asset allocation basis. Uh, if I look at the goal that she set for herself, uh, you know, an SIP of uh, I think it's about twelve thousand rupees yeah. uh, a month, uh, and to build up to a crore, I think it's definitely achievable. Uh, one is you got to make that shift towards slightly more. Uh, growth, wealth creating assets, like I said, on the small and mid cap side. Yeah. The other thing I would urge uh, her to do is, you know, you have 12,000 bucks starting now, but every year you want to step that up. So All right, uh, then uh, for the time being, the markets are under some pressure. We're down close to around 75 points. Let's do one thing with we'll Slip into Sharpie. Come back. We'll continue our focus on the markets.